Bible study with friends, where our goal is to help you get more impact from your Bible study. We believe that everyone, anyone, can enjoy studying the scriptures with learned tools and techniques. So join us, no matter what your experience with the scriptures or what your education level is, join us and become a better Bible study. <laughs> and listen, today we're going to be talking about the waste of work. We're going to be answering some questions. Do I work like Solomon? Do I, do I replace work with a normal life? <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come right back. Hi, and welcome back to Bible Study with Friends. I'm here with my friend, Stan Ford. And Stan and I are going to continue in this study. As we said earlier, that Ecclesiastes is a wonderful book from the idea of the natural perspective, the human perspective. And that's what he's really going through here uh, in a lot of these statements. And we'll see that as we go here. We went past this last week, and I wanted to go back to chapter two, when he's talking about the vanity of, of his prosperity, his riches. He's been talking about his achievements and his wealth and that sort of thing. And in verse seven, we would need to look at what he's saying here. He said, yeah. I bought male and female slaves. I had home-born slaves. I possessed flocks and herds larger than all who preceded me in Jerusalem. Now, in the context, he's talking about achievements. This is not a verse of condoning slavery. In the culture, he had slaves. Slavery was a cultural icon at the time. Right or yeah. wrong, it was. Jeez. What he's saying here is that his achievements of wealth was self-producing. Look, look what he says. He says, yeah. I bought male and female slaves. Okay, so yeah. he says, I, I achieved a level where I could purchase slaves i could purchase help workers then he says and i had home-born slaves so what's the difference the home-born slave is somebody who was born to one of his slaves that he had in by in his possession i guess you would yeah uh, is, so is not a good way to put it but what he's saying here is i bought slaves and the slaves produce more slaves yeah now that's not Biblically con condoning. Remember, this is from the human perspective, not the biblical perspective. But he's saying, yeah. I, I achieved wealth. In fact, my wealth started to produce more wealth. Yeah. And I was in a good spot wealth wise. And that's what that's saying in, in verse seven. And he talks about, I produced flocks and herds that, and that flocks and herds produce more flocks and herds. Okay. Yeah. And then he talks about, I collected myself silver and gold and all the rest of that down to verse 12. Now, after achievements, he goes through a little section here from verse 12 down to verse 17. And he says, my achievements were great. So I turned to consider wisdom, madness, yes. and folly. I wanted to think about, he says, I wanted to think about human wisdom and the difference between wisdom and madness and the difference between wisdom, madness, and stupidity, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. or, or really being stupid in my actions, folly, yeah. all right? For what will the man do who will come after the king except what has already been done? Now, one of the elements of Ecclesiastes is Solomon is really considering death. Yeah. Death is on his mind. And he says, all this wealth and everything, when I die, it's all going to go to somebody. We talked about that last week. It hasn't even worked for it. And it's all going to go. And it's a waste for me to try to gain all this, to pass it on to somebody who doesn't appreciate it, hasn't worked for it, and that sort of thing. So he says, so I decided I turned from accomplishments to learning 
wisdom and even doing stuff that's crazy and doing stuff that's just silly. Yeah. And he says, Be, because of this consideration of if I'm straight laced and do human wisdom and I die, somebody else gets it all. And yeah. it's just a waste. And he says, I saw in verse 13, I saw that wisdom excels folly as light excels darkness. So wisdom is a lot better than stupidity. Okay. Yeah. And he says, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. It's, a wise man lo looks around and has enough understanding that he can get through life on a human level. And he says, but the fool just is walking in darkness. Now that applies to, in Psalms, it says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And we know that people who have not become Christians walk in darkness. So he's starting to understand there's human wisdom and human folly. You walk in darkness. But if even if you're a wise man and you're not a believer in God and a believer in Christ, you're walking in darkness too. And that's the yeah. folly that he's this vanity that he's talking about. Can I yeah. in, back in verse 12 when he talks about for what will a man do that comes after me? And I got to thinking about that. His son, he only had one son that we know of that was going to follow him to inherit his kingdom, his throne. And yeah. he's really speaking about his own flesh and blood. Yeah. And he's extrapolating that up into a principle of there, there are guys that work all their lives and learn all kinds of stuff and are very smart. And invariably, the next generation isn't. Yeah. And doesn't use what they learned because when yeah. they die, that they can't pass on wisdom. Yeah. And, and it frustrates him. And he looks at that next generation and he says, I've got a generation uh, the, of, you know, like the Hiltons and the Rockefellers where the next generation just takes it all for granted and doesn't work, doesn't earn anything. Yeah. Just is wasteful and is in a lot of ways foolish and does folly. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's what he's talking about. Now down in verse 14, it says the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And yet I know that one fate befalls them both. Yeah. What is the fate? Death. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and look down at verse 16. He says, how the wise man and the fool alike die. Yeah. So he's saying, where's the value in all this learning and everything? And he says in verse 15, I said to myself, as is the fate of the fool, it will also befall me, a wise person a learned person, why then have I been extremely wise? What's the purpose? Now, this is from the human perspective of not training another generation, not discipling somebody in the Lord and passing on spiritual wisdom Yeah, in the form of knowing Christ and being discipled in him, what we're trying to do with Bible study with friends. To, to create better Bible studians, <laughs> as I said. Okay. <laughs> Somebody who's really serious about the scripture. He's looking at it from the human perspective of just, I've got another generation here that they just take it. And I haven't passed on anything. And he says, yeah. I said to myself, this also is vanity. It's a waste. Yeah. We talked about that word vanity. It's just a waste. Verse 16. For there is no lasting remembrance of the wise man as with the fool, inasmuch as in the coming days, all will be forgotten. In other words, to another generation or two, and no matter how wise you were, it's just forgotten. You might be written up in a book somewhere yeah. about how wise you were, but you're pretty much forgotten as far as any relational benefit. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That verse right there, verse 16, verse 17. We're never going to be remembered. And you think back, uh, back to the pastors and things that uh, I like to read after, like the D.L. Moody and people, Billy Sunday and people like that. 
Uh, you mentioned some of those names now, and some nobody some knows who they are. Know. Some generations don't know who they yeah. are unless they get really serious about their faith and do some reading. Now, yeah. on a spiritual level, there is remembrance that passes on. One of the commands of God is to his believers is remember me, remember the past, remember men and women who made an impact in your life. And so yeah. the guy that led me to the Lord 50 some years ago, boy, I remember him. I really honor him for his willingness to come and share with a hard case uh, to share the Lord and really help me become a believer and then disciple me and become a, a, a Bible study in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'll never forget him. But on an earthly level, just some professor somewhere he, he, he is going to be forgotten in, in two or three generations. Yeah. And then he says yeah. in verse 17, so I hated life. Now, he's not being suicidal here, but he is summing up his view of all of his efforts, his view of life. So I, I hate my life. Yeah. I just hate it. When I read this, Lynn, well, uh, that just really stuck out, and it so resonates today's standards. You take people who are striving, who are just like Solomon, that in those verses four through eight, where he talks about, I made, I acquired, I done this, I did this. And then you go down to verse 17, he says, I hate life. Yeah. And he here's a man that had it. And, it, had so, it. and there's some, we talked about this last week, that there's some people that have all this achievement, all this wealth. And even smart people that hate life to the point where they commit suicide. And you go, yeah. what is going on? From the human perspective, they go, oh, man, this is all a waste. Where's yeah. the meaning? Because, and he's going to get to this in a minute, God has created this God-shaped vacuum in the life of every single human being. Yeah. And we try to fill it with knowledge. We try to fill it with all kinds of stuff. And it just doesn't satisfy the way we are built to have it satisfy. And Solomon's going to talk about this. We are built to have a relationship with God. And those that don't and try to fill it with, I'll have a relationship with wisdom or learning or a relationship with stupid things, folly, yeah. madness, drugs, sex, and rock and roll. And you, they go, that's not, it, it's vanity. It's a waste. And yeah. they, they start to hate life. Now, there's a hint in verse 17 that moves us to the next section. He says, so I hated life because the work which has been done under the sun was grievous. Okay. <laughs> he says, that, but I looked at all the work I had been doing, the work of learning and wisdom and all and achievement and all that stuff. But he starts to think about the work. And that moves us into the next section of the vanity of hard labor. And we're going to see this. I want to show you this section here. We see a, a hint. Look from verse 17. He says, I hated life because the work had been done under the sun was grievous to me because everything is futility and vanity. Okay. Yeah. Stri striving after wind. We saw that same phrase. I've got it highlighted because it's a continuation of the phrase we saw earlier. Yeah. Everything that I do in the human perspective is just a waste. And so yeah. I hated life. And then he says on again, talk, thinking about death. He says, for which I had labored under the sun, for I must leave it to the man who will come after me. In other words, I'm working all this. I'm working so hard and everything, but it all goes to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Now he might be thinking of his son, but a broader principle is it's all going to go to somebody. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's going to inherit all the things I've worked for. Now, I highlighted the word labor here. You can see that I really put an emphasis and on the on work. And he says, I hated all the fruit of my labor which yeah. I had labored under. In fact, that's, that should be another. I'll show you here. I took my marker 
And I, I have I use this marker that's got a bunch of colors in it. It's a Pentel. And uh, I mentioned it in some other videos. What? But I missed a word there. And he goes here. I labored under the sun right here. Yeah. So he says, the fruit of my labor, which I had labored under the sun, for I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool. Yet he will have control over all the fruit of my labor. So he's, he's thinking of death and he's thinking about the inheritance. And he says, yeah. I have labored by acting wisely under the sun. This too is a waste because it all goes to somebody who could be a fool. Yeah. And that's happened to a lot of men's wealth where the, the yeah. next generation or the next or couple of generations, all yep. of a sudden they're, they're, they're a waste of space, <laughs> as some of my yeah. friends would say. It says, therefore, in verse 20, I completely despaired of all the fruit of my labor for which I had labored under the sun. When there is a man who has labored with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, then he gives. Now, there's a switch here. It's interesting. He's been talking from 18 down to 20. He's been talking about me and my labor, right? Yeah. Yeah. But we see a subtle switch, and I switched it from a circle to a, a little square. In 21, he says, when there is a man who has labored with wisdom and skill and, and knowledge, then he gives his legacy to one who has not labored with them. This too is folly and a great evil. So he's moved from my experience to a principle. Yet where now yeah. we're talking about a yeah. man, anybody... And he's talking about their achievements. And he's talking about a principle here. And it's a principle for us that workism. Now, workism is a term where people work and work is the point of their life. It's all about the work. They're workaholic. Yeah. And in this day and age where people have a job and then they have a side hustle to make a little bit extra money, YouTube is famous for that where you, we put the emphasis on the hustle and the achievement and gaining a little extra audience or a little extra money or a little extra sponsorship. And there's a principle for us here, the waste of work. Now, it's not the waste of work. God loves work. He created work. In fact, oh, yeah. we look back in Genesis, he gave work to Adam to do in paradise. Yeah. He, work, work in the yeah. garden. Yeah. So he's not talking about work for work's sake. He's talking about the futility of labor that somebody else gets the benefit for, somebody who hasn't worked for it. And he, this continues on. You can see all the little squares here when there is a man and he gives his legacy to one who has not labored with them. This too is vanity. It's a waste. And it's a great yeah. evil because you give it to somebody who, who wastes it. Who throws it away. Now, in, in verse 22, it says, For what does a man get in all his labor? See the principle? Yeah. For yeah. all his labor and his striving, striving for which he labors under the sun, because all his days his task is painful and grievous. Grimous. Even at night, his mind does not rest. This too is vanity. And that's part of workism is I really don't sleep a lot because I'm constantly thinking about how to make more money, how to achieve more achievement. I go to bed and I'm sitting there thinking, and I know guys that sleep with a pad next to them so that if they get a, an idea for business, they can write it down real quick. Damn. Yeah. They don't rest. They don't take a Sabbath day. They don't take vacations even. So they say, oh, good, I got a vacation from this job so I can work on my side hustle. And it becomes... A waste. Now, then he says, there is nothing better for a man that to eat and drink. There's a continuation there in verse 24. There's no better than for a man to achieve and tell himself that his labor is good. And he said, this I also have seen that it, it is from the hand of God. Man. Now, so what is the it when he says it is from the hand of God? 
the the uh, the fruits of his work of his labor the ability to work yeah the, the desire to work is a gift from the lord in fact he told he gave that gift to adam in the garden the, the, adam did just sit under a tree and eat grapes he had a job to do and he felt fulfilled in that job and he tells yeah. himself the labor is good and he says, yep. 25, for who can eat and who can enjoy without him? Now, the him is God. Yeah. So now he said, okay, I've been looking at the human perspective. Now I'm going to look at what God gives us the gift of Just, work to enjoy the work. And not just work mm -hmm. to work. Now that's work is work. my life is work. No, you work, you eat, you enjoy life solomon is saying in verse 25 the only way to do that is with the lord with god in yeah your life. with god and in verse 26 for to a person who is good in god's sight that's that capital h the translators are homeless yeah. there for a person who is good in his sight he has given wisdom knowledge and joy while to the sinner he is given the task of gathering and collecting so that he may give to one who is good. In other words, if you work, if you're a sinner and you don't have a relationship with God, you can work all there is, and God's going to ultimately bless somebody. And so this idea of wisdom, knowledge, and joy, this is not human wisdom, human knowledge, and the humanly generated joy. This is spiritual wisdom spiritual knowledge and spiritual joy comes to those Amen. who are good in god's sight and how you get good in god's sight is you accept christ as your savior he forgives all your sin and helps you to live righteously with the holy spirit indwelling you yeah. that's true wisdom true knowledge and true joy we talked about that in in corinthians when it talked about the wisdom of the world the wisdom of the natural man is a waste but god's wisdom is a mystery and the mystery is grace given to us so we can have real wisdom of god we can have real knowledge of what god has done for us and we can have real joy in that yeah that makes sense yeah and he says and if you're just a sinner and it's all about the hustle it's a waste for you because it's going to go to somebody else and God is going to bless somebody else with it. And yeah, said, it go ahead. I just, the flow of what he's saying in this chapter to me, like I said, he starts out with, I did this, I did that. And then he talks about, then he worries about what he's leaving behind to someone else. Yeah. That his labor, what he has achieved, his labor, it's not going, is he going to be wise to how to handle yeah, all of this. Now, that, I asked a question earlier about, do I work like Solomon? And Solomon spent a period mm. of his life where it was all about my work, my my hustle, yeah. my achievements, all this stuff. And then he realized that he is going to pass that on to somebody who may just blow it. Yeah. But if I'm working with the Lord, the Lord is now going to get it and move it to somebody that he wants to have it okay yeah so if i bring the lord into my life and i have the perspective of i'm working for the lord and the lord is going to give it to somebody who it'll be a blessing for them and i start to affect men spiritually god will pass that on that wisdom knowledge and joy on to another generation spiritually and that, that's happened in all of our lives there, where somebody has told us about Jesus and it has made an impact. And yeah. one, of, one of our huge desires in our hearts, we believe everybody can learn how to study the Bible. And one of our joys is that if we hear we've had an impact in helping somebody become a, a Bible study and <laughs> become serious <laughs> about the Bible in their lives, then what a blessing that is for us. And we hope it's been yeah. a blessing for you. It's in there. This says, at the last verse of 26, says, this too is vanity and striving after wind. Uh, now, 
what is the this? It's not that God is in charge. It's back to see the labor. He said that the labor without God is vanity. Yeah. It's striving after wind. Yeah. So he's starting to make the distinction between my natural human perspective that is depressing and a perspective of wisdom, knowledge, and joy that comes with having a right relationship with God. And we're yeah. going to see that continue on with the proof of vanity that we can observe in the world. And we're going to talk about that next week. Listen, I hope this has been a blessing to you. And I, I have a recommendation for you in just a second. So stay tuned for just a couple more seconds. And I'm, we're going to say goodbye to Stan. Thank you so much for a good Bible study. I've enjoyed it. For it's been, wise, this is good. For your wise input. Uh, are you working like Solomon? And that's not a good thing, the way he was working originally, of striving for the side hustle, striving work for work's sake. And that's why the title was uh, uh, the, the Waste of Work. And we, I have a recommendation for you in a video for you to watch that you might be interested in. The video is called Christians on the Job. And there's a link right here. And we, I hope you click on it and enjoy it. This is from the perspective of what, what does a Christian employee look like? How should a Christian employee act in a secular culture? In fact, a culture where they may be surrounded by people that are, it's all about the hustle. And the people that are realizing that their job might be a waste. How's a Christian supposed to act? And you might enjoy this video. So click it. And I hope you subscribe. And listen, we're going to continue our study next week. And until then, God bless you.